This is Dusty Jones here to talk about Euler's phi function. And Euler's phi function deals with counting relatively prime numbers less than a certain number. So how many positive numbers less than 20 are relatively prime to 20? And what about 19? Pause the video here and figure that out. It turns out there are eight numbers less than 20 that are relatively prime to 20. We have them listed here. Uh, for the numbers less than 19 that are relatively prime to 19, there are 18 of them, uh, 1 through 18. The Euler phi function, phi of n, is the number of numbers less than n that are relatively prime to that number n. So phi of 20 is 8, and phi of 19 is 18. Euler introduced this function. Uh, it's also called the totient function or the indicator function. Gauss is the one who introduced the symbol phi for this function. It is a function because for every input number there's only one output number. Is there a difference between these two definitions of phi of n? One says that phi is the number of numbers less than n that are relatively prime to n. And another definition that you may find is the number of numbers less than or equal to n that are relatively prime to n. What do you think? I'd like for you to make a table for phi of n uh, using the domain 1 through 15. And then, looking at that table, determine if p is a prime number, what is phi of p? Here's the table that you should have had for uh, n 1 through 15. And as we look at the prime numbers, phi of 3 is 2, uh, phi of 7 is 6, phi of 13 is 12. Does that give you any hint as to what phi of a prime number would be? phi of a prime number is the number minus 1. Uh, that makes sense because all of the numbers less than a prime number p are relatively prime to that number. Now let's think about if p is a prime number and k is a whole number, what is phi of p to the k power? And I'd like for you to use a few examples, 16, 27, 25, and 343 fit this pattern, uh, being 2 to the 4th, 3 to the 3rd, 5 squared, and 7 to the third power. The numbers less than or equal to p to the k that are not relatively prime to p to the k are the multiples of p. Uh, they're p, 2p, 3p, 4p, all the way up to p to the k minus 1 times p, which is actually p to the k. Those are the numbers that are not relatively prime to p to the k. There are p to the k minus 1 of these. Therefore, phi of p to the k is p to the k, all the numbers, minus p to the k minus 1, the ones that are not relatively prime to p to the k. This holds true when p is 5 and k is 2, so that it holds for 25, and if p is 7 and k is 3, we get phi of 343 is 294. If m and n are relatively prime numbers, uh, then phi of m times n equals phi of m times phi of n. And you could look at the table you made for evidence of that fact. Phi of 6 is phi of 3 times phi of 2. And phi of 20 is phi of 5 times phi of 4. Uh, therefore, if n is this is a number with this prime factorization, p1 to the k1, all the way up to pr to the kr power, then phi of n is the product of the phi values of those primes to powers. So what we see here is phi of n is the phi of p1 to the k1 times phi of p2 to the k2, all the way up to phi of pr to the kr. Here are some exercises where I'd like for you to make a table uh, of phi to the n for n going from 30 all the way up to 50. 
And then something else is I'd like for you to try this process uh, for a couple of numbers, 15, and then try it again for 48, where you list all of the divisors of that number, find the phi value of each divisor, and then sum the phi values. Once you've done that, see if it leads you to any conjectures.